We're ready to begin. Thank you for attending today's webinar. Today, our subject is our Ethernet switches. During today's webinar, we will go over our unmanaged switches, our managed switches, some of our cyber ring switches, our fiber optic switches and converters, our PoE accessories, including uh, splitters, uh, some application examples, and finally a Q&A at the end. If anyone has any questions, uh, we will answer all of the questions at the end. ICP-DOS was established in 1993. Our headquarters is in Xinchu, Taiwan. ICP-DOS USA was launched in 2001 to support North and South American markets. Our company is ISO 9001 certified. Uh, we, we're a Windows embedded partner, and all of our products are CE and Rojas compliant, which means lead free. A little bit of history. Ethernet is an ideal medium to transport large volumes of data at high speed across great distances. Early Ethernet was based on a hub or repeater. These units have no intelligence and therefore are unable to identify any information contained within the header frame of the Ethernet packet. This means that it is not capable of determining which port to send the frame to, so it sent data to every frame or every port. A switch, like a hub, has to forward and receive packets from one network or device to another, except that the packet is only forwarded to the one network or device that it is intended for. Why choose ICP-DOS? There are many poorly designed switches in the market today. Uh, they are fragile and easy to collapse and always suffer from transmission delays and unreliable conditions uh, due to packing collisions and other issues. Users have experienced poor switches in the past to so try our high quality one. ICP-DOS switches only use real industrial grade switch chips that are temperature tolerant and highly reliable. They are well designed by our engineering team and we're continuously putting out new products with new features. And we have harsh environment switches and some specialty switches for some OEM customers and for applications which require special duty uh, certifications and IP ratings. To reiterate, an unmanaged switch only passes data from the source to its intended target or device, not necessarily to every single port. Our industrial grade switches use industrial grade components, so therefore they are more reliable. Uh, we have versions available which are a standard 10 slash 100 uh, megabits per second. Uh, we have high temperature versions. We have some gigabit versions which also cover the standard uh, 10 slash 100 but also incorporate the gigabit uh, speed. Uh, we have some IP67 rated switches and we have some in metal housing as well as our standard plastic housing. Here's a list of our standard Ethernet switches currently. Uh, they start off with our standard 5 port, a 10 slash 100 uh, version, which has a standard 10 to 30 volt DC a power input and a plastic housing. And followed by our NS205A, which is our robust version, which has a higher power input so that it can incorporate the 48 volt uh, DC for some applications. Uh, let's see, going down the line, we have some eight port switches uh, with plastic and metal housings. Uh, we have our uh, NS205AG, where the G refers to gigabit communication. And at the bottom, we have a few uh, switches which have IP67 rating for underwater applications. And uh, finally, our NSM208M12, which I'll show you in a few minutes, which has a metal housing plus it incorporates M12 connectors. Let's see, here's a comparison table for a few of our switches. Um, let's see, the standard NS208 has a plastic housing and is DIN rail mountable. Uh, there's a DIN rail clip on the back and the dimensions are given so. 
Um, let's see, our A version, which is our robust version, uh, let's see, has a higher voltage range and also is a slightly different shape and mounting. Uh, finally, at the end is our NS208R, which has EN50155 certification for high vibration applications. This switch was initially uh, designed for high, high vibration applications, including railway applications where it's used very heavily. Uh, let's see, this, this switch has a wide temperature range of negative 40 to 75 degrees C as well. Also has the DIN rail mounting capability and has a power input between 12 to 48 volts DC. Because the train environment had heavy vibration, we also created the NSM 208 M12. Uh, these use standard M12 connectors and also have the EN60, or I'm sorry, 50155 certification for high vibration. Uh, with these M12 connectors, in place of the standard Ethernet connector, they are even more reliable for uh, high vibration applications because the connectors are screwed in to the connectors. We also have some underwater switches, uh, which have an IP67 rating. And notice at the bottom is a picture that shows how the Ethernet cable is fed through the cable gland and twisted onto the IP67 connector to provide a watertight connection. Uh, there's a few in here that have PoE ability. I'll go over PoE in a few minutes. Uh, but the standard underwater switches are NS205-IP67. Uh, and all the way at the far right is our NS208, which is an eight port version of the IP67 rated switch. In between, we have a few other variations. Here's a close-up look at them. Uh, they are currently available. This slide is just a little old. On the IP67 rated five port switch is on the left side. At the bottom, there's a power connector and the primary ethernet connection. Uh, the power connection also has a cable gland, and you can wire um, two wires to it for power. And the, the picture at the right shows how it has a DIN rail mount clip in the back. Uh, for some customers who use our pack, our view pack, wind pack, and X packs, uh, we have a slot module which has an Ethernet switch built in. So you can use one of the ports for an Ethernet switch, and it's just a standard Ethernet switch that you can use to save space on within your enclosure or on the uh, rack itself. Power over Ethernet is a widely used industrial, factory, and building automation application. This technology uses unused pairs of conductors in the Ethernet cable to provide power to devices. They follow the IEEE 802.3 or AF uh, standard. Uh, the power supply is 15.4 watts at 48 volts DC. And we use N-SPAN connectors, which are the standard for uh, power of Ethernet. Some applications or some products uh, require mid-span. Uh, this product would not be useful for those. A power over Ethernet switches are not standard switches, so you can't just simply use one of our previously mentioned unmanaged switches. You need to buy the special PoE version of the switches. Power is supplied to the PoE-enabled devices through the Ethernet cable. Uh, these do require specially designed PoE devices. So your device must have the PoE feature in it to get power. You can't just use a PoE switch and power anything. You need to have PoE-enabled devices. Uh, Non-PoE devices can be used in combination, but they will only receive Ethernet communication. The power will be you know, essentially not connected in those applications. Uh, we do follow the IEEE 802 0.3 AF designation for 15.4 watts per port. Uh, there are other PoE standards, one for 30 
watts, which uh, this one is not certified for. And we have also non-standard PoE devices, which don't necessarily supply the 48 volts, uh, but they uh, supply other voltages. Those would not be satisfactory for this switch in most instances. Uh, here's a listing of our current PoE switches. Uh, these are unmanaged switches. Uh, so we have everything from a four port to an eight port. And notice that not every single PoE port has PoE power. So our first one has is a NS105 PSE. That has five total Ethernet ports, but of which only four of them are designated PoE. The main one being the uplink port, uh, which is a standard Ethernet port which does not supply PoE. Uh, we have uh, different versions. Uh, towards the bottom, we have a few versions that say Dash 24. Uh, those are powered by 24 volts, but they do put out 48 volts of power to the PoE devices. So in other words, the power is converted into inside the module to be 48 volts. So you just need to be sure you choose a large enough power supply for these. Uh, towards the bottom, we have a few IP67 versions in the M12 version previously mentioned that also have the PoE feature. So again, you need special PoE-enabled devices to use these special PoE switches. Uh, we also have Ethernet switches with fiber ports. Fiber optics are used to bridge distances and connect switches which may not be right next to each other or may require higher speed applications. Uh, let's see, these switches have uh, one fiber port along with four Ethernet ports. And you just choose the version which applies to your application, whether you want a plastic or metal housing, and if you want a 24 volt powered one, or if you want uh, the higher voltage range, which is 46 to 55 uh, volts. Uh, here's a comparison table of our switches with fiber ports. <clears throat> Um, let's see, the standard one being our NS205F series that has our standard 10 to 30 volt range, a plastic housing DIN rail mountable, uh, followed by a metal housing version, which is NSM205F. And towards the end, we have a few other versions, which are for a wider voltage range and a tall housing as opposed to a, a wide housing. This application picture shows a, a standard application for our fiber switches. Uh, in the middle would be a, a fiber switch with two fiber ports. They're connected up to two kilometers away to other switches or media converters to provide Ethernet communication to other devices far away. Sometimes the uh, Ethernet cable will not go long distances. So for instance, standard I believe is 100 meters. For applications which require further distances, you can use fiber optics to bridge those gaps and keep everything in the same network. Uh, we also have Ethernet to fiber converters. Ooh, that's a misspelling right there. Uh, we have general media converters. This is an application where uh, the distance between the wind pack on the right and the PC on the left is a, a large distance. You can use two media converters, one Ethernet to fiber converter, and the other the same thing at the other end, except it does the reverse action where it converts the fiber back to Ethernet, so you have Ethernet communication at both sides. And we have standard and uh, dual or mixed mode fiber versions of these uh, converters. So you need to choose the appropriate type based on what type of fiber you want, whether you want mixed mode or uh, single mode. Our media converters table are shown here. We have different versions for different types of connectors and uh, different voltage ranges. Uh, both have one fiber port and one Ethernet port.
a managed switch adds features to improve reliability, security, and monitoring. Managed switches allow you to monitor port activity, control who can access certain ports, and control the throughput of certain ports as well. A few examples, security cameras connected to a switch can take up a lot of bandwidth, especially for large networks. They can slow down your entire network. Using a managed switch, you can control the speed allowed or the bandwidth allowed for those specific ports where the cameras are connected. Others, uh, redundancy applications in data logging applications where you want the same data to be available to multiple connections. Uh, the switch can email and create uh, an audible alarm using a relay in case of network failure. And ring switch configuration is also available to provide a backup path for data. I'll go over ring switches in a few slides. Uh, here's some management features that are available in some of our switches. Be sure to check out uh, the spe specific specifications for a specific switch if there's a certain feature which you want. These include VLAN, a QoS or quality of service. This is the one used for uh, restricting data for camera or bandwidth for the camera if they use a high bandwidth and you want to restrict it. Uh, we provide relay alarms for, in essence, when the switch uh, has a network failure, cable failure, or various other con pre previously configured alarm situations. You can send email alarms from these switches. They have trunking feature, port mirroring, where uh, the data from one port goes to uh, multiple ports. Uh, the ring switch configuration, which we'll go over in a few slides. Uh, the ability to monitor port and check the cable to see if it's still connected or if it failed. Uh, you can set port priorities. And there's also accessible IPs where you can block certain IPs from uh, being able to connect to this specific switch. Uh, the management console uh, can be configured using either RS-232 serial connection or Ethernet through Telnet, but the preferred way to do it is through the web browser. You'll see a menu like this uh, when you punch in the IP address of the managed switch, and from here you can configure the various features, whether it's redundancy, port configuration, the alarms, the QoS, or the VLAN. This slide shows our current managed switch uh, selections. Uh, towards the top are our standard managed Ethernet switches. Notice for the top two under ports, it says 24 and 2, and then 20 and 6. The next slide will show you a little bit more information about that. Uh, towards the bottom are managed switches with fiber ports. Again, the fiber ports help extend distances, and we have various versions with different power ratings. Uh, housings and number of ports, as well as fiber connectors and fiber types. <clears throat> On the previous slide, the uh, two at the end and the four at the end refer to the far right, where these use special um, adapters, which allow you to use them for different types of fiber ports. So you buy these accessories that's shown at the bottom, which provide you the ability to uh, put in SPF modules, which are of the type that you require. So for instance, for a multi-mode fiber, you can use the top one, SFP1G85M-SX. If you want a single mode, you must choose from the bottom four choices. Port mirroring is a very popular application with our managed switches. Port mirroring is used, as the picture shows, to mirror the port 4 to port 1. So the data coming in and out of port 4 and port 1 go to port 8 in this application. And this could be used for troubleshooting and monitoring of network traffic.
ring switches provide the ability to provide a backup path for data in case of a broken Ethernet connection or a broken switch. This will ensure that the network will not suffer from data loss due to one switch failure and one cable failure. I'll show you a few pictures in the next few slides which will give you a better overview. Uh, the ring topology can be implemented either over fiber or ethernet connection. Uh, let's see, typical networks require 20 to 30 seconds uh, for a network reconfiguration if a link failure occurs. Using our cyber ring technology, we reduce the downtime to half of a second. Uh, the typical recovery time is 20 milliseconds using our uh, cyber ring network. These are our current selections of ring switches. Again, various speeds, various numbers of ports, uh, different power supplies and different housings. We have a wide variety. Uh, towards the bottom are versions including fiber ports. Um, our most popular one is our RS-405 and 408. Uh, for the fiber ones, I would say the most common would be the RS-405 FC or FCS. Uh, here's an application picture uh, just showing what the cyber ring switches look like in action. So there's one computer connected to uh, the switch at the left. Uh, it communicates with different devices throughout the network. Uh, and the switches are interconnected to provide more than, uh, in this case, four ports, but to various devices. So if one cable or one switch fails, uh, because there's two connections, it has a backup path for data. So data will go counterclockwise if uh, the pink uh, line is uh, lost. They can also be used in ring coupling applications, shown here, where you combine data from two rings and you can uh, have a backup path in all different cases. <clears throat> whether the copper or fiber fails, or whether a single ethernet cable also fails. You can use our managed switches, which have ring capability, or you can use our standard ring switches, which do not have all the management features, but just the ring configuration. We also have a multi-ring network configuration shown here, where you just use an extra set of ring switches to provide the backup. Uh, we also have a few PoE accessories. So for instance, if you have a PoE-enabled device and don't have a PoE switch, you can simply buy a PoE injector to add the power through the Ethernet connection. This can be used for applications where you have pre-installed PoE devices and don't want to rewire or have to add power connection through, or maybe the device doesn't even have a standard power jack. It can only be supplied by PoE. You can use the PoE injector. I'll show you a picture in a minute that just simply has one Ethernet port coming in. You supply power to that side, then it has a second Ethernet connection, which goes to the device and it'll combine the power and the ethernet into that single output uh, ethernet connection. And we also have a PoE splitter, which can do the opposite, where you have a PoE switch, but you need to supply power to, say, a terminal block or a power cable. Uh, you can extract the PoE power through uh, the PoE splitter. Here's a picture of, again, what uh, the PoE injector does. So you have non-standard PoE switch and a PoE device. To bridge the gap, you simply wire the Ethernet connection from the switch into the PoE injector, apply power to the PoE injector, and then the output will be resulting in a PoE output, which supplies both power and Ethernet to your PoE device. Um, that's all I have for you today.
Uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask them. If you have any questions after the fact or if you're seeing this on video, uh, you can contact us at the phone numbers provided, our website, or email. Uh, you can follow us on Facebook, Twitter. Uh, we have a YouTube channel, Google+, Instagram, and Pinterest. Does anyone have any questions? You can type them in the chat box uh, for the GoToMeeting uh, console. I'm not seeing any questions. Uh, let's see. Okay, well, let's see, I don't see any questions, but if you do have questions after this meeting, please feel free to contact us either by phone or through email or through our website chat. Um, let's see, next month, I believe our presentation will be on uh, converters. Uh, that'll be about the third week in July. Uh, let's see, we want to wish you a happy 4th of July, and we'll see you next month. Thank you for attending.